Is this Carmen and Camille? Hi. How are you two ladies doing? It's nice to talk to you guys again. I know. It's been a while. It has been a while. How have you two been? We've been good. I'm just going to... Now, the last time I talked to you guys, which was a while ago, and some of the listeners might not um, know your voices, so uh, as the last time we chatted, uh, I got you guys both to say your name at the end of uh, uh, each, each time you guys talk. If you don't mind doing that again, just to help the listeners out, uh, it would be well appreciated. Yeah, for sure. That, that was all Camille, and this is Carmen. Now, hi. Hey. So the last time uh, you know we chatted, um, you guys hadn't put out your album, which is uh, called Neon. So uh, let's talk a bit about uh, your uh, most recent creation, which is uh, Neon. Talk a bit about the album and uh, the inspirations behind it. direction but still keep kind of elements of honesty and heartfeltness because we do feel like you know it needs to come from an organic place this is still Camille um yeah so we the songs were like kind of inspired by our move to LA and just where we are in life and um like I guess you know there's songs about growing up there's songs about having fun there's songs about um, relationships, and that's just, you know, kind of where we were at when we were doing the whole writing for the album. Now, um, about two, I guess three years ago now, you guys, um, you guys got to hang out at the, uh, you know, the Winter Olympic Games, and you got to do all kinds of great stuff. Um, talk about, you know, how you guys started in the music. Uh, well, we, how we got started into it? Yep. This is um, well, we are twins, for those of you who don't know, but we are twins, and we definitely come from a musical family. Like, our our dad plays guitar, and our mom sings, and so it was always like they were very supportive of us pursuing music and doing music, and we would definitely have, like, sing-alongs, and, and our parents would be recording music growing up, and we wrote our first song when we were three about our, our cat. Our grandma's cat called Bobby, and basically we just spelled out Bobby's name, but we were pretty proud of ourselves at the time. <laughs> and, yeah, so it's, it's always been in our blood, and and we just decided after school and everything that we would we would go after it, and it's been a, a crazy journey, and we've had some highs and some lows, and I wouldn't change a thing. Now, um, some of those highs have been, uh, you know, being nominated for a, a Juno Award back in uh, 2010. What is that feeling like to, you know, be nominated for something? And how did you find out? Oh, it was pretty awesome. We <clears throat> we got a phone call, like, super early in the morning. And we, well, 6 o'clock, which for us is pretty early for musicians. But, um, yeah, we got a phone call really early, I guess from our manager, saying that we'd been nominated and just kind of freaked out and did a little happy dance, called everybody we knew. Yeah, we were pretty excited. I might have gone back to bed, though. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I'm going to guarantee she went back to bed. Now, um, yeah. since then, you guys have... It's okay. Uh, I was just gonna say, you guys are on Skype. We're on. I'm do calling this off of Skype, and it's uh, the internet, and here's a little choppy. So if I do cut you off, obviously it's it's absolutely nothing personal. It's just it might sound like you stopped talking, and there's a bit of a delay, and then I talk, and then you guys say something. So I do apologize in advance if that does happen again. <laughs> Now, since since, since 2010, you guys have, uh, you know, you've, you've done really well. You've put out the new album, that sort of thing. Uh, I've also heard that, you know, and, and seen you guys' tweets that you have uh, performed the National Anthem, at, at, you know, at a couple of Los Angeles Kings games and, and things like that. What's more fun, performing the National Anthem at uh, in, in Los Angeles or performing it in your hometown in, uh, in Vancouver? Ooh, that's a good question. And um, this is Carmen. Um, I don't know that any is more fun because it's all fun, but I definitely feel like there's more, maybe more pressure in Canada. Like people really take it seriously, and, and like people do here too. But 
in Canada, it's like it's our national sport, and there's definitely a sense of pride, and, and just a lot more people before racing will be like, you better not mess up the words and stuff, and, like, there's a bit more pressure, but, and it's amazing, the pressure you can put on yourself, it's like, it's just, we're singing one or two songs here, like, should be able to do that without stressing, but you just, you care, because usually, like, our families in the audience, or, you know, like, we usually know a lot of people that are there, and it's just that added pressure of, like, wanting to, you know, make people proud and represent your team well and everything, so. Now, what is it like being uh, being Canadians down in uh, you know the music uh, sort of capital of the West Coast there in uh, in Los Angeles? What's what's that like? What's the scene all about down there? Well, the scene is it's pretty like I, I say it's kind of spread out. Like there's a, there's a lot of places to play and stuff, but there's different communities. There's like Silver Lake where it's kind of more like hipstery, and then there's like Hollywood where it can be a bit more rocky, rock sort of vibe and you know, there's a lot of different musicians here, a lot of talented people. So you're definitely a smaller fish in a bigger pond, which is good because it can be like motivating. And um, I do miss our community in Vancouver. I feel like you know because we grew up there, we we knew quite a few musicians and bands and had you know a lot of support and stuff. So it's kind of been like starting from scratch down here in a in one sense, but it it's been really fun. It's been like really good for inspiration and getting out of your comfort zone and learning a lot about yourself and yeah it's been good that's Camille First, for an artist that that comes for, that goes down there, whether they're from Canada or they're from anywhere outside of LA, um, what what's some advice that you'd you'd give an artist that's that's maybe never really been to LA or or is just moving there and they don't they don't really know anybody, they're just sort of trying to make their way like you know the thousands of other people that come to LA. Yeah, this is Carmen. All I can say it's like, who am I to give any advice? But at the same time, we have been through it and. I just think that you just got to, there can be a lot of distractions in L.A. and you just got to keep doing what you're doing, but at the same time be open to meeting people because there are a lot of opportunities here and you never know who might want to help you. And you do have to weed through. There's a lot of people that will make promises, but you get better at figuring out quickly who's, who's the real deal and who's not. It, is that... Yeah. Is that challenging to find out who's the real deal and who's not? Or do you get a sense of sort of in gut feeling? Uh, fortunately, we have each other. This is Camille. We have each other to kind of like bounce off like our instincts and kind of sort it out. We've got a good team that you know we work with that are good at that too. So you know we've I guess made mistakes along the way, but for the most part, I think we've we've got pretty good instincts now and and can kind of sort through. Yeah, and I would say another piece of advice would be to get a good team around you and to, uh, because it's, it's not easy to do this alone. Yeah, there's no roadmap, and there's, yeah, I really, I feel like we're so much more open to just, like, you know, working with people and synergy and, like, ideas, and, you know, it's nice to, to have people that you can trust to, like, bounce off ideas and, like, co-write with or, or have help you with gigs and everything like that. I feel like, you know, you got to stay open and meet people. What is um, what is one thing about, uh, you know, being in L.A. that you miss most about, uh, you know, being about Vancouver? Miss most about Vancouver? There's so many things. Like, definitely our friends and family, that's huge. Um, yeah, I feel like every time we go back and visit now, this is Carmen, it's just hard to fit it all in, and you never get to see everyone that you want to, and even, like, with their family, like, it just makes me sad when I'm leaving. I'm like, oh, I'm not going to see my parents for a couple months, and that's hard, but at the same time, like, I do consider, you know, L.A. to be home now, and, and but yeah, I feel yeah. like this is Camille. Vancouver will always be my home, like, even though... The more I go there, the more far removed I feel for obvious reasons. But I also just feel like this kinship with it. I just really yeah. love it. It will never not be. Um, one of my favorite things there is the blends, dark chocolate, hot chocolate. They don't have blends down here. There's like <laughs> coffee bean and things like that. But shameless plug for blends here. I they're, If you haven't tried it, their dark chocolate, hot chocolate is pretty awesome. We get it with soy milk. 
Now, um, one of the things that I, I, I've uh, always found very interesting is that you've had a handful of your songs uh, placed in some, some TV shows, including um, uh, stuff from your album, which uh, was featured in the MTV show, The Hills. Um, that must be pretty cool when, you know, you, the last time we talked to you, you know, you said, there's Lauren Con- Conrad sitting in a breakup scene and your song's on. That, that's got to be a pretty cool feeling. Like, hey, that's that's my song. And she's, she's crying. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, we... Um... We, uh, we definitely lucked out with that. That was really a lot of fun, just getting to be a part of something that was, you know, we were already fans of, so it was nice to just, you know, be a part of it. It was really cool, for sure. Yeah, and just to have your song be the soundtrack for something, it's like you're you're watching the show as well as, like, freaking out because your song's in the background. Yeah, and they really did a good job of the song placements, I feel like. Like, it just felt... Like, there was emotional impact, and, like, our lyrics were really, like, suiting the moment and stuff, so it was really cool. Now, one thing that uh, is also pretty interesting about you guys is uh, you guys sponsored a race team back in the day, which is uh, really interesting. And, and not I've I've never met another artist since I've interviewed you guys that have, that have ever said to me, we sponsored a race team or had some involvement with a race team. How did talk about that whole thing and, and, and what that opportunity was like? Yeah, it's pretty cool. We just saw the movie Rush, and so I'm, I'm actually feeling pretty proud about the whole situation. But <laughs> yeah, it's not easy what they do. It's, I don't think um, it's quite like the speeds of Formula One or anything. But um, yeah, we just got approached, and and you know they yeah, people have, or I guess the the team that we sponsor they have our our logo on the car, and just funny. It's like we we happen to be in Toronto. And, while ago and and we did some pictures with the car and got some pictures taken with the car and the where our logo was it was all banged up because the person had like scratched the car or something had happened i'm just like, yeah. like a mini accident and yeah. right where our logo was i just feel bad and i'm like not not like oh don't hurt my logo more like oh there's the potential there for like actually like people getting hurt so you definitely you know want to do anything you can to make sure that everybody's safe and all that now, um, when you guys moved to California, um, you, we talked about this the last time, and it's a pretty interesting story. You guys had a little bit of a run-in um, over the phone with uh, Justin Bieber, and uh, apparently he prank called you, which is uh, pretty interesting. Do you want to talk a bit about that and, and sort of how that happened? Yeah, it was uh, it was quite the story. Me and Carmen, or Carmen and I, this is Camille, we were driving someplace, and Carmen stopped and got out of the car to run an errand, and I was sitting in the car, and somebody calls, and... Didn't recognize the number, answered the phone, and it's somebody saying that they work for the gas company and that I haven't paid my gas bill. And we, like, just moved to L.A. and just figured out that you gas is not included in your rent. You actually have to, like, pay for gas. So we were kind of like, oh, okay. Well, we paid the gas now, and I'm, like, freaking out. I'm, like, trying to find a confirmation number. And he's like, well, you, you've got to pay your gas bill. And so I'm just like, what is going on? This is a weird conversation. And then he's like, I think he just got bored because I was just like, no, I actually haven't paid my gas bill, but I, I just did. And anyways, he <laughs> was like, oh, well, you know what? This is Justin Bieber. I actually got my got your number from Dan Cantor, who's his guitar player, who we had played with right before Dan got the Bieber gig. So he just randomly had my number in his phone and randomly called us. And then I chatted with Dan. It was like, uh, my face was so red. I felt so embarrassed. <laughs> I come back into the car. I'm like, look at her. I'm like, what just happened? I, I'm like traumatized. I'm like, I guess that was cool, but now he thinks I don't pay my gas bill. But <laughs> whatever. It was pretty funny. Now, uh, Carmen, you actually graduated from broadcast journalism at BCIT, and uh, Camille, you uh, went to a, you did the jazz vocal program at uh, Vancouver Community College. Uh, this question a yeah, little man. bit a little bit more for Carmen here. Um, even though you're a musician, do you sometimes find uh, you know yourself uh, with a little bit of the journalism instincts or anything like that? Like, I had to intern at all of the stations, like BCTV and BC, uh, CTV and uh, CBC and all of those places, and definitely in City TV when it was City TV, I guess, and it, it, I just, like, now when I watch the newsroom, I'm just in awe, and, like, the level of which they do that, and, like, 
those situations and stuff, I do feel like it, it's still a part of me, and it, it's interesting to be on the other side of the interviews all the time now, and so it's like, oh, I can put this mic on myself, and oh, I know exactly what you're doing right now, but, but I, I would rather just do this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it seems like a pretty good gig. <laughs> we've actually had some kind of hosting opportunities that we've kind of talked about lately, so I, I that definitely is something that we you know, hopefully we'll be doing soon because we are kind of talking to people about that. But and I think with Carmen's experience, she's really good at it. And then when she was she was sick, she was hosting this horse racing TV show. Whenever she was, like, sick or couldn't do it, they'd just stick me on there. So suddenly <laughs> I'm hosting a TV show. I'm like, ah, I don't know what I'm doing. But it was really fun. So I could, yeah, ideally tying in the music with a show sort of thing and hosting it and, and uh, yeah. Involving music into it all. Now, we're going to take a couple of questions here off of uh, Twitter. One of them comes from Natalie in Ohio. She wants to know, um, what is uh, what are your two, what are your biggest fears, and if this is for both of you? Biggest fears? Yep. Oh, biggest fears. Well, look, if we're going to get real here, real deep, Natalie, um, you know, I think that there's fear that comes from, like, you know, wanting to reach certain goals in our lives, and, and you know, there's pressure that you can put on yourself for that, but I also think at the end of the day, we've, you know, we're happy, we're, we're doing the best we can, and that's all you can do is just kind of, you know, hope for the best and move forward as, as much as you can, so I think, yeah, um, I think I've mostly made my peace with, like, dying and things like that, mostly, so I think it's just, yeah, I try not to live in fear and regret but i also can be a pretty nervous person so you know you know fear comes about yeah meditation is good for that we definitely like i feel like last year we kind of delved into the spiritual realm a little bit more and i feel like that's been good for balancing out like emotions and fears and things like that you're not afraid of snakes or, or bugs or anything like that no, I forget. Yeah, the mouth level. No, like, I'm not really afraid of heights. Don't, spiders don't bother me. No, let's be really afraid. Yeah, if I see a bug, I probably will, like, scream and act like a total wimp <laughs> and then be like, oh, okay, it's fine. But I don't really kill bugs. This question comes from Catherine, and uh, she is in uh, near Montreal. She wants to know what are your thoughts on um, colored hair. I'm not sure, but the uh, what she means by that question. But uh, I guess what are your thoughts on colored hair in general? Oh, ooh. Well, Carmen actually just had a big hair change. I did. No one's really well. If you follow our, our t- Instagram on Carmen and Camille official on Instagram, you will see that I did make a, a drastic change. I've been blonde for so long doing the whole highlights thing and stuff, and I just kind of went more red. Mm. And so we we are a fan of it. Uh, it was actually, it was a big deal for me because Camille's always been the one to change her hair, and I feel like it's been a bit liberating. So yeah, I uh, yeah, this you know, I think, you know, change is good. We're Geminis. We, we like change. We are adaptable and kind of crazy like that. And then, yeah, for, like, the IDGAF music video, we had blue hair, I had blue ends, and I like to switch it up. So I say, you know, give it a whirl. A couple more quick questions for you here here before I, I let you two go. Um, you guys have performed all over the world. Um, you guys have performed in, 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 the, in the desert. You guys have performed in the Arctic. Um, what, I guess, what was harder, to perform in the, uh, in the Canadian North or to perform in Egypt? Well, uh, yeah, that's an easy answer. <laughs> this is Camille. Definitely where it's colder, it's like your hands getting numb. Like, we did an outdoor show in Toronto a year or so ago, and it was freezing outside. And, yeah, the Arctic, we were inside, but it is definitely, like, you're wearing, like, you're just freezing. You're getting from anywhere to anywhere, and, yeah. Yeah, uh, much, much respect for uh, the soldiers and the people that were in those places and 24 hour darkness like yeah. no daylight so it's yeah it's definitely i'd say that's a little tougher on that whole spirit and stuff too just trying to like get some sunshine yeah some, some, people, some people are better in the cold some people are better in the heat i think we're better in the heat they, yep yeah. 
The last question for you is um, going forward. What is sort of the, the you know the, the next thing on on your agendas in terms of uh, you know creating new music or, or any shows or, or as you sort of maybe a little bit alluded there, but a bit of a talk show sort of a radio sort of gig thingy there. Yeah, all of the above. We are working <laughs> on you know we're working on new music always. So. That's really been dominating a lot of our time. We've got some recording projects. We're recording some, uh, like, kind of an acoustic EP right now um, because we, we've actually gotten a lot of feedback from people that they really like our acoustic stuff. So, so we do listen if anyone has any suggestions or anything. Yeah, and we're also working right. on um, organizing kind of a smaller tour. We want to get playing for probably, I, will, I won't say dates, but, yeah, we're organizing some touring. And then along the West Coast. Along the West Coast, yeah. And then, um, yeah, just to keep them busy with that. And then, yeah, there is, you know, talks of some potentially doing some shows and stuff with some kind of music interviews and things like that. So definitely stay tuned. And we'll, we'll keep you posted. Very cool. Well, uh, Carmen and Camille, thank you very much, uh, you two, for uh, you know taking the time out of your night to uh, to come and do this. It's uh, it's nice to chat to you guys again. It is. It's good to have you here, air boy. <laughs> well, thank you very much, and I promise this one has been recorded. Awesome. <laughs> if it hasn't, just let us know. Yeah, we're happy to do it again. <laughs> well, we, we'll have you back here anytime, and uh, you two take care, and uh, you know, enjoy the weather down in L.A. Thank you.